chance. Yeah. Ask them what the hell these things are. Okay. These, these, look at them all. Yeah. Are they houses or are they, what is the purpose? Don't look like real nice houses. <laughs> Not a place I'd want to live. Legend of the Monkey King. It is about as ubiquitous as you can get here in China. It's a legend of a powerful monkey sort of demigod that is mischievous but also somewhat uh, Somewhat good. You know, I never understood. <laughs> he always seemed like a real, real jerk to me, but uh, his legend uh, is, is very strong. And there was a m bunch of movies and films made about him. They were made at this beautiful, beautiful ravine in this area. So we're going to go tour that today. We have a busy day today, actually. We're going to be uh, exploring a bunch of different beautiful spots in this valley, as well as driving around and checking out areas all over the place. Jayo, let's go. Interesting surfaces to climb, huh? I imagine every step forward would be like a, a third of a step back. Just seems like a lot of sand up there. This side looks maybe a little bit easier. That one looks like a whole lot of fun. <laughs> I find it beautiful in these areas where you have the, the desert landscape and then a river cuts through and then you just have this lush line, you know, just sort of haphazardly drawn, snaking through the valley. It's really beautiful. So Jing Jing, yeah. uh, so this place is like about, because the Monkey King is like a legend, right? Like an yeah. actual, it's not just a story in a movie, it's like a legend, right? But Tang Zeng was real. There were actually a monk, one all the way to the west to get all the scriptures from the west India I think I'm not sure about this <laughs> factual part but the monk was real during, during Tang Dynasty and of oh. course then there's a literature um, add some like the monkey the pig and another <laughs> <laughs> monster from the from the ocean from the river uh -huh. so all of them uh, like Tang Seng is their master okay. ride the horse so they lead all their way to the west to get the scriptures. And all the way, they have to finish countless challenges. Uh, 81, 81 challenges. So, and one of the important stop is here, Huo Yan Shan. Here, guys, we are in Huo Yan Shan. All Chinese know this, this <laughs> yeah, name, yeah. I'm sure. Even I know, even I know this movie, you know, yeah. <laughs> this story. Yeah. So like for, for people like, like my generation, we, we, when we were kids, we watched this TV series, Monkey King, Journey to the West. There's an iconic scene just shot on that mountain. Mm -hmm. So all of them are walking on the mountain in the desert <laughs> all the way to the west to get the scriptures. <laughs> It's here, guys, <laughs> our childhood. And then what else? So you have the walking bit here, and mm. then is there like, because I, I know oh, the movie takes place. Um, yeah, they, they, this part was, they filmed that scene here, uh -huh. but this mountain, Huo Yan Shan, is also an iconic stop in the, in the literature, yeah. also in the movie, because Huo Yan Shan was on fire. It's so hot, so hot, it was on fire. So the Monkey King has to, one of the challenges, he has to put out the fire. Oh. So. But no, nothing, there's no water. There's nothing can really put out the fire. He pees on it. No. Does he pee oh, on it? No, uh, there's only a magic fan. Okay. Magic fan can put out the fire. Okay. So it's from another fairy. Uh, so he borrowed this pipa. Uh, I might remember this, right? So he's <laughs> borrowing this fan to put out the fire. Uh, okay. So it's like, this is a, Huo Yan Shan is an important place in the literature, in the movie. Okay, okay. I always thought he was a bit of a, a bit of a, like a, yeah. he's a trickster, you know, that monkey. Mm -hmm. I thought he'd, he'd pee on a fire and put it out. Yeah, yeah, he's kind of <laughs> That like seems that. like the kind of thing Monkey yeah. King, and my impression of Monkey King would do. Always laughing and giggling and causing, jumping around, moving, you yeah, know, he's, yeah, yeah. cool. 
but beyond that, this is like a thousand Buddhist grottos as well, right? Like there's yeah. like mm -hmm. the actual the historical significance of this place is pretty. Mm -hmm. We have some experts, rich. actual experts, mm. archaeologists, uh, gonna tell us more about the like the the grottos yeah, yeah, and everything. Yeah. Let's find out. Yeah, pretty wild. It's beautiful though, I especially like down there where the valley comes in and the river cuts through, and it's just mm -hmm. like. Desert, mountain, desert, mountain, and then this line of green through the center. It's gorgeous. Now I've been to Dunhuang, and Dunhuang has the uh, infamous, famous, Mogao Grottos. There's a series of 700 plus Grottos. Grottos are basically just <clears throat> uh, caverns dug into the surface of, of stone, a lot like this. This, like, sort of. Uh, well, I don't know if it can be done in different types of stone. I'm sure it can be, but the ones in Dunhuang and the ones here, I think, are going to be very similar. Carved into desert landscape uh, walls, and then the ones in Dunhuang each tell a story of uh, whoever carved it. And oftentimes the people that carved it were uh, wealthy, were influential, and so they kind of imparted their culture, their knowledge, their personal experiences onto the walls of the grottos. And the Dunhuang Mogao grottos, I mean, they were each like their own amazing museum in themselves. Each uh, decorated with uh, ornate inks and colors and designs, and sometimes they had uh, gold you know in the area i mean just just gold inlays you know but some of the grottos had been um uh, pillaged and so the gold and some of the more valuable components had been stripped away and uh now nowadays they're very serious about it they won't even allow you to take pictures on the inside under uh, most circumstances but let's see what these ones look like How's it going? Good. Is it warm? Burning. Do you need a fan? Fan. <laughs> the monkey came. Didn't he bring a fan here? Cool it off? Wasn't that the legend? But I need, I need your crazy fans. Did you watch the monkey king when you were a sure, kid? Sure. Turn yeah, to yeah. the last. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's like the... Um, I'm, I'm trying that's to like the out. Transformers of... Ah. Harry Potter. Yeah. Harry Potter. Harry Potter, yeah. Each one of the grottos here are numbered. So this is 26. And this one must connect to the 26th. From the 11th and 12th century. So here in number 39, Sasha Joe. Now you're not supposed to shoot video or pictures in here but I have the uh, privilege of being part of a crew here so I can shoot some pictures. You know, that's one of the, one of the benefits of going in with a, a group that is attached to the local government is that I can kind of show you things that most people can't see. Uh, again, I sometimes get flack for joining these events, but you know, by joining this event, I can show you things that maybe most people wouldn't be able to see if they didn't come here and set foot and have their own Yan Li, their eyes to see. Now, you can see here that a, a lot of the surface has been degraded over time. Um, originally, you had this rough brickwork back when they first created the grottos. They'd dig out a big cavern and they'd lay in brickwork and then they'd cover it up with plaster. And at some point in time, this whole area was just beautiful pictures and very, very vibrant colors. The pigments came from natural substances that you'd find throughout this area, whether it's plants or organic sort of substances. And then they would just, just kind of paint pictures. This one was made in the 12th century. And let's see here. The center of the cave is rectangular Buddhist altar. Thousands of Buddhas are painted on the top wall. Original Guangyin statue on the main wall has been damaged. So there was, there was a statue here that has been damaged. Now the, the Mogao grottos 
are way, way more pristine than this. And so the original artistry has been faded, but it's still very visible. And the original structures, like, so there was a statue here at one point in time. People would come in here in the 12th century and just, you know, I mean, could you imagine? Can you imagine scaffolding here and people actually up there painting the walls based on, you know, ideas and thoughts and, and their own religion and their own culture and they're trying to impart it into the walls of this grotto. I mean, I wonder if they ever thought that, you know, a thousand years later, just about, you'd have some American guy, Y. Warren, walking through, uh, appreciating the remnants of the designs that used to paint these walls. Pretty wild. Even, you can see why they don't let people just go haphazardly recording or, or hanging out here. People scratching their names and, and graffiti into the surface. Here's a, <laughs> I don't know, is that a Buddhist swastika or is that a, and on the back wall you can see almost like a pine cone-ish structure. And then the Buddha was probably right around here in the center featured, gone, erased from history. So basically, well, you know, Xinjiang is the kind of the place that has multiple religions. Multiple yeah. religions came here, spread it to uh, other parts of China or from China to other parts of the world. So actually Buddhism came a thousand years earlier than Islam in this region. Wow. And this place, Turpan, is a perfect place with all these relics, historical proof, to show you Buddhism were actually here long, long ago. Yeah, so yeah. there are uh, currently, this is called a basilic thousand Buddha caves. Yeah. Mm, uh, now the all experts dug out around 80, around 80 different caves. Mm -hmm. And they all come from different dynasties. The longest one dated back to Nanbei Chao, South, North Dynasty. Mm -hmm. And that's around the year four, 400. That's a, the year. 400, the longest yeah. one. Uh, they also found caves from Tang Dynasty, Song Dynasty, but the Buddhism reached to a peak during Song Dynasty. I think they uh, assume around thousand different caves, but a lot of caves were destroyed. You know the landscapes in the in the history. Oh, there's one cave I just went to a, a year, a, around the year 1905. Uh, the armies from Germany, France, Japan, they all came to China uh, in the name of investigation or adventure so they find out this place you know what like actually in the history the, the experts just mentioned some caves were intentionally buried yeah yeah intentionally yeah. buried but so by they the, wouldn't be pillaged you know, yeah by the monks yeah, themselves yeah, yeah. so they dug a hole the standard will come here to cover that so by the when the, all the eight armies from uh, armies from the eight countries came here i think maybe because of the wind uh, the tiny tiny bit of the mural mural I was exposed were exposed, mural. Yeah. Mural. so they find out, oh, there's something, they dug out, oh, they found a well, there are more caves, so they went inside, uh, dug out, uh, cut some pieces of the mural, once, now they find some are in Germany, they being displayed, some are in Japan, some even in South Korea, mm. but like, their next time China was weak, even they know it's precious, but they can protect all these relics. When I was in the Mogao Grottoes, mm -hmm. they have a similar story. Uh, there were excavators that were cleaning out the area and a guy was smoking a cigarette. And the smoke from the cigarette came past a pile of sand and the smoke sucked into the sand. What? And so they're like, there's something behind there. And you know what it was hidden? Was the library. Mogao has an, a huge library of scrolls. Mm -hmm. Very, very famous. Like, I don't know how many. I, I forget, but like thousands of scrolls mm -hmm. based on the history in that time. And that was the hidden one. Mm -hmm. And so the guy found it by smoking a cigarette and the smoke from his cigarette like was affected by the air mm -hmm. flowing in and out of the mm -hmm. out of that grotto. Yeah. So it's pretty interesting. I'll show you some cave we just find out some interesting things. Is this one? I think yeah, yeah. Come here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is the cave 33. These are the murals. But you see that part? Um, the scientists just find out, he just told me, yeah. they found out a long time ago. <laughs> so this That's part the piece they cut out. Cut out by Japanese. Oh. Uh, because the team came from Japan, were not the expert archaeologists. Yeah. So, like you see, 
roughly cut, not professional. Yeah. But they found out this is this part of mural was is being displayed in Japan right now. Oh. Um, some I mean, what about them. like these little scrapes? Is it what are the, what are those from? They look very specific, like scraping yeah. the face off. Yeah. But I don't know about this one, but there are some other murals they covered with gold. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. someone just cut the oh, gold out. That happened in Mogao too. Everybody yeah. pillages that first. Yeah, so, but you, some caves, you see this, this painting? Yeah. This is very interesting. Uh, this is about Nirvana. In Buddhism, uh -huh. it's about Nirvana. But they chose to, you see all these people? Yeah. They all represent a different race, different ethnic group. Okay. Yeah, some, these guys look much different than the Yeah, ones some over here. from the Arabic, some from the Central Asia. In the middle, you see the guy, this is a like, typical Han dress yeah. in the uh, Han Dynasty. Yeah. So, all of them, each of them are from a different ethnic backgrounds. And this painting was from Song Dynasty. It's wow. like, this is from around the year 4th, 14th century, probably. 14th century. So, you see, in the 14th century, this place is a multiracial, multi ethnic mm -hmm. backgrounds. But actually, it was during, even during Nanbei Chao, it was still a multiracial region. You know what I like to think about when I'm in these places is think about the colors. These colors have been faded. Some of the caverns in Mogao Grottoes actually you faded through and you yeah. saw the other one. Like, like some of them were repainted. Mm -hmm. Like, one was Buddhist and then mm -hmm. it was covered by another religion. Mm -hmm. A Hindu was very popular in yeah. the Mogao area, but but like the colors here, that green that you could just see faded yeah. was like boom, you know, like super super beautiful green, yeah. and all of these colors. Yeah. It's 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 kind of sad, but it's also kind of like interesting, you know. Like, but it's also it's quite important <laughs> for all the experts here because through all these caves from different dynasties, they find the evolution of painting styles. Yeah, 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 yeah. Evolution of culture, evolution of belief, ev evolution of painting styles, evolution of techniques. Mm -hmm. I mean, a whole lot of things can be seen. Like they're like, in each one of these is its own little museum. You yeah. Know? It's pretty wild. It sounds like the name that they gave the, um, the lizard in, in Harry Potter. <laughs> right, the basilic, wasn't it the basilic? Basilic. Basilic, basilic. right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> Kim here, he's the editor for the videos in CGT. Hey, so what are you doing? You're like fact finding so that later when you input all the stuff you can get you get yeah, it right. you know we got uh you know we got 5000 years of history. You know that's a long ass history. So <laughs> so you got to You got to make sure the you got to make the sure the dynasties are right. We have like so many different kinds of dynasties so you, ha you can't be wrong, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been watching this guy. We're driving around and he's editing. Ooh. And then Jing Jing is shooting the video and he's editing some of the video. So I'm hearing Jing Jing's voice from your computer. Yeah. From in Jing Jing's computer and everything. And from Jing Jing's mouth, of course. You can't miss that. Yeah. But then, like, I'm a little jealous. Oh. Because I'm sitting on my computer doing the thumbnails, doing the keywords, doing the videos, yeah. doing the uploading, doing the everything, and I'm like, then you should hire one. <laughs> I, need, I need an editor. You know, maybe you can offer a uh, double price yeah. of my salary. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I can't afford that. <laughs> what about these? Are these old grottos that have been like worn away or? Oh, okay. And uh, some are, I think there were some over there, there's some places they find out some corpse of the monks. Uh, so like they a build tomb. a. Like yeah, tomb? but like, like they built their own tomb. Mm, mm. I think he built it while he was he's, alive, wow. but he's like, oh, okay, this, this is going to be my grave. <laughs> I'm not that proactive. <laughs> so now we've talked a little bit about Wukong, the Monkey King. We have uh, seen where those famous movie scenes were shot. We looked at some of the grottos here. Next up, we're going to go to the Fire Mountain. I'm not 100% sure where it is, but I'm pretty sure I know where it got its name from. Like I said, this, this area does remind me of like Vegas. Some of the deserts around there. We had a place called, well, we still have a place called Red Rock. And uh, the rocks are red, very similar colors to this. Beautiful. This is the 16th grotto. And not much is left, actually. It's kind of sad. There was a rec reclining Buddha here. And the images of Nirvana uh, adorned the walls. As a matter of fact, there were uh, all sorts of depictions of music, people playing all sorts of different music. I, I gotta imagine that this place, when it was uh, pristine, was just gorgeous. Ironically, German explorers came here and they sort of had their way with it and they, they took off 
And I don't know if they relocated the boot or took it back to Germany, but they, they sort of ransacked the place. Why, why do people do the things they do? I don't understand. So much work went into this. Could you imagine if those people that painted this place originally found out that some foreigners from far away came in here and just brutalized all their hard work? Bummer. So one of the uh, stories in Ba Jiao Sha, which is like Journey West, is uh, the Monkey King is the Monkey King is tasked. The Monkey King finds the fan, or the woman finds the fan. He stole the fan from the woman, and then behind me is is uh, Fire Fire Mountain. You look at it, you could see that it looks a lot like uh, flames, and he used the fan to cool the flames. I'm using the fan to cool my belly. And it's working quite well. ceiling here reminds me of Vegas. The Venetian. Actually at the Venetian there are times where it will rain. It will make thunderstorm sounds and the clouds will darken and it will rain inside the Venetian mall. Pretty cool. So this guy, Lin Zexu, he's a really famous in Chinese history. He's a rock star. But um... Because he dug wells? He... Gosh. Right? I forgot what he did. <laughs> <laughs> He's just a rock star. Don't worry about what he did. It doesn't matter. It, just won't. it does matter. What did he do? You don't so he, he... He did a lot of great stuff. He did stuff. a lot of good stuff. He was good just stuff. a great guy. Charity. He's the kind of guy who wants to sit at the bar and Save dog and cats. Yeah, yeah. It's more like a dog person, you know. <laughs> What is this at uh, temperature, huh? So it's 60, 65? Is that what it's saying? So this is a thermometer. Right now, on this, this plate here, it's 65 degrees. Woo! Woo! Warm. You see the three flags? Yeah. That's the altitude zero. Oh, that's zero. That's, that's sea, zero sea level. Sea level, sea level. So right now, we're currently like below Under zero. Sea level. Under sea yeah, level. Yeah. Oh. There's the uh, evil monsters. They look like they enjoy their job. Oh, that 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 like uh, directs the heat, maybe? No, no. So regularly, they will if the if the temperature is high enough, they will put the egg to in here oh. to cook because today is not that hot enough. So it's cool here. Oh, that's sand. Juda. Okay. So when it gets really really hot, they take the sand from under this tarp and they put it in those metal brackets there, those metal forms, and then it gets so hot you can cook eggs. Right now, it's not so hot. In the, in the history, bands of monsters roam the, roam the mountainsides, causing a ruckus, so that these, these the very authentic actors are the monsters running through the area. Hey! hey. How do people survive in such an arid area? How do they grow crops? How do they provide for their families? How do they wash? How do they get water? These karas, many of them, are over 300 years old. They could do about four meters every day. Some of these tunnels were, like I said, over 10 kilometers long, so you do the math. Now this 
is the size of the tunnel. You can see here that people had to slave away, working, chiseling away at the sides, chiseling away at the roofs, transporting substrate backwards to the closest tunnel in order to deliver the substrate up. Not only that, but oftentimes they had to be hoisted over 120 meters down into the earth just to get here 